Hey, what's going on, fiends? I'm up here at my favorite haunt. And, uh, just wanted to have a little chat. I got back from the Trioxin Tribute uh, a couple days ago. I, didn't, I only stayed for Saturday. Um, and, uh, that was tiring enough. Y'all crazy bastards who did both days are... Well, I mean, minus the musicians, those guys, <laughs> I know for a fact those fuckers are crazy, but, uh, yeah, uh, it was, a uh, that fucking debonair music hall is hot, hot, hot. They definitely need more, uh, air conditioning. Anyway, I digress. Um, it took me a few days to both you know, recover and, uh, gather my thoughts, because what a fucking couple days that was, it was a couple days, uh, so let me recount, uh, we drove in from Ohio, obviously, and it was a good, oh, I don't know, nine hour drive, something like that, we did, kind of did it in two legs, where, uh, we crashed in, like, central, well, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and then uh, did the last like little bit the next morning, and we rolled in at 11:30, right when the meet and greet started. So we walk upstairs, and the absolute first thing I saw was my friend Rachel and uh, her fiance Dave, and then of course Eric Blair was there, uh, Eric from Mummyle, if you guys don't know. And then uh, we saw Scott, who works uh, down, uh, what is it, Tattoo Junction, whatever, James Rose Tattoo Parlor. He's the piercing guy down there. Uh, puts on Zombie Stomp Fest. So Scott was there, and it was just like good friend after good friend. And uh, we got a poster to have signed. And so it, <laughs> it was funny because... Uh, We've known the guys from Blitzkid for so long, like all of the people I just mentioned, that we just kind of all stood in the back and let everyone else like go first. And then uh, Sean, the, the gentleman putting the show on, was introducing uh, everybody to the band. So when he gets to me and my best friend Jess, uh, he... <laughs> He, he, he says, this is JG and Jess, and Goolsby, without even missing a beat, just about, he stands up, he's like, there's a guy I know. <laughs> and uh, so, we, you know, we, we caught up a little bit. I mean, it was a busy-ass weekend, so it's really, really hard to just, like, have quality hang time with anybody that was in any of the bands. Um, so, it... That was pretty cool. While we were waiting in line, I got to meet the Powers family. I believe that's their last name. Um, Anna and Lily and Donnie. And they gave me this pin, which is dope as shit. And they also gave me a sticker, which is obviously not on my hat. Um, and they gave one to Rachel, and too, and uh, Scott. And yeah, that was really neat. Got some pictures with uh, those people. Uh, I believe Anna took a picture of me and uh, St uh, Goolsby's wife, which was, it was oddly, that was the first time I ever really got to talk to Jordan. So, there's photographic evidence of that particular little meeting. And then, yeah, then the meet and greet was pretty much over after that. We went up to the hotel room. Uh, I grabbed some lunch because I'm a weirdo and take food with me instead of going out to eat because... I'm also cheap. Uh, <laughs> and then we, we kind of, you know, we booted up, literally, because I wasn't wearing my boots to that fucking meet and greet. Damn thing's about to kill my feet anyway. And uh, we went down to the venue, which, uh, uh, side note, fuck Jersey traffic right in the goddamn ear. Seriously, that fucking turnpike is a nightmare, uh, among other things. Just like the streets in Jersey are completely dicked and maybe it's just me being from Ohio 
but I stand firmly against anyone pumping my own damn gas for me. Just fuck a whole lot of that. It, maybe it's just a Midwestern thing, I don't know. Not my cup of tea. Anyway, <laughs> we get to the venue. Uh, we got amazing parking. I think we, we got there early enough. We got like street parking half block away or something. I mean, it was fucking killer. And as we're walking down the street, who's the first motherfucker I see and gives me a big ass hug, but JV. Uh, and I, I, I never get enough hang time with JV because like, it, like it both annoys us but like I'm, I'm hoping this fall we get some smaller like darrow shows or something so we can have some quality like hang time that'll be awesome but anyway he introduced me to his girlfriend and uh, you know a little bit of hang there and uh i think we went into the venue after that because like man they started that bitch promptly at four o'clock i think we might have missed Devil in the Belfry. Well, I ended, they didn't. I didn't see him play. But uh, then, let's see. Jess Lantern was on stage, doing her thing, and it was killer. Picked up a couple of Jess Lantern CDs, and then yeah, there's a whole lot of end thens at this point because it was just band after band after band. But. Uh, I, once, like, there was just multitudes of hang time. Like, for, as soon as we got in the venue, first thing I did was my boy Joey from Gallimere. I ran and found him. Uh, and uh, then I got groped by Joey because why not? Uh, and then it just, it was powerful emotions left and right at the show because, I mean... Oh, hang on, hang on. Like, the openers were just getting people, like, what they were doing what they were supposed to be doing. They were getting us warmed up. But one, okay, uh, Robbie Bloodshed came on after Jess and just fucking murdered it. Robbie's a good kid, a fucking killer artist, all that. Um... But seriously, when Captain... Okay, there's a this artist called... Uh, it was a cover band. Apparently Jason's favorite cover band called Captain Geach and the Shrimp Shack Shooters. I had no idea what the flying fuck this was going to be about. And I'm still, like, utterly confused how awful the dude's vocals were and at the same time endearingly awesome. It makes no sense to me, but it's what happened. Um, they played a, like a lot of really really awesome 60s tunes that were just horribly like Horribly sung but still like they were just having a ball and then uh, Brian Kellner came up and did a fucking misfits like set and then um, uh, Well Tracy came out uh, TB he came out and did some songs and like they just started having people coming up and doing like songs that Jason loved. It was cool as hell. Like <laughs> I like I've I've never seen a band be uh, simultaneously not great and also awesome at the same time. But they did they fucking played forever. I swear to god they played an hour and a half. It was downright ridiculous is what it was. Um so once uh, once they got off, that was when like the emotions started running real high. Uh, because let me think here, who who got on stage next? Darrow. Darrow went on after that, and I mean that was just the start of the insanity. Because it was like obviously Darrow had it. Uh, at least two members of Mr. Monster in it. So they just fucking plowed into their set and just went for it. Like always, but oh my god. And then they played Bro Him, of course, which was emotional. Uh, and I, at some point, I think it was right before Darrow's set, I, I hooked up with my friend Maddie and her wife, and that was fucking 
awesome. I've been talking to her online for ages. She's cool as shit, and her wife's cool as shit. And uh, yeah, it, yet again, didn't get uh, too much quality hang time with her either because fucking people everywhere. You bring our horror family together over here, and it, like, no one can get like too much hang time in with each person because everybody's getting yanked around to see everybody they fucking know. Um, it's, it's fucking nuts, but, you know, I, I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world, but damn. Um, so Darrow goes on, just fucking murders the stage. Uh, Goolsby comes on next with his solo set, which, it, half the venue wasn't even in there for Goolsby set, which I get, I mean, we all wanted to see Blitz Kid, and he was going to be in that, and plus, Goolsby was, he did at least three fucking sets that night. He was in Mr. Monster, his solo set, and Blitz Kid, and he, he did four the next night. And I, I, I forgot to mention during the, the meet and greet, they did an acoustic set, which was completely different than the Hollow Bodies set that everybody got live, or, you know, the, uh, the next night. Um... Which I would have liked to have seen, but whatever. I'm sure I'll see the hollow bodies at some point. Anyway. Um, but yeah, like half, half, the, by this point, the, like Darrow lit the place off so fucking much. That venue was smoking hot. I mean, uh, I don't know. Satan's taint, maybe? That's a good equator. I don't know. It was fucking hot, though. And, uh, so, like, half everybody was outside for Goolsby set, and, like, we were inside getting water, and it, it, he just fucking killed it, and he was wearing silk, a silk fucking shirt. That was, the man has more backbone than I do. So, uh, the Goolsby set went off. Pretty, I, I feel like his set was fairly short, and he opened with a fucking CCR song, um, <laughs> which I was a little confused because we walked in like in the middle of that song from being outside, and he's playing it, and <laughs> it, was, it was a pretty good cover. So he did that, and then his set went off, and then the Mr. Monster set, which that was just nothing but high emotion. Uh, they fucking killed it. Let's see. Highlights of that. Jess Lantern came out and did Deep Dark. Um, Shadow Windhawk came out and did Sin More Paramedics. Uh, I'm sure I'm forgetting things. Tracy came out and did a song or two. Uh, he opened the set, actually. And, of course, Goolsby did some songs. Um, JV did some songs. You know, everybody was contributing. It was it was amazing, and of course they they ended on till the end. I I have yet to see the full set from the second night, but it's, I bet it's pretty good. Uh, after that, they uh, they gave Goolsby a break, and CK Five went on. Maybe the Goolsby set was after Mr. Monster, because the Goolsby set. Had the like the CK5 were his backing band. They were the Roving Midnight this particular evening, and and the next night. So ah fuck, I don't remember the actual order. All I know is when the, the CK5 went on and they just you know, my God, just killed it, absolutely killed it. And oh man, it was it was like. I'm just, I'm literally just gushing. I could just sit here for the next 10 minutes and just, it was fucking awesome, dude. It was. It was great. Everybody played their hearts out. There were people missing that, like, just couldn't make it that we really, like, like we talked about. I did, I ran into uh, Zach from The Big Bad, and that made me think, like, Jack needed to be there. And Nate Wells from The Epidemic, we were definitely not forgetting you. Um, you definitely were missed. And I guarantee there are other people that I'm not thinking of right now. Uh, West Coast people, like Rick, uh, you, you were definitely missed. Uh, 
Yeah, but anyway, uh, the Blitz Kid set um, after CK5, holy shit. It was like they didn't even miss a day. I mean, they just came out and annihilated the place. Uh, it was, it, the set felt too short, and I was left wanting so many songs and grateful the, for the ones that we got. Which, who knows if we, we may get another Blitzkid set, set or something at some point. I mean, no one should say it's the end. Touring? No, it's not, shit's not gonna happen. Um, but one-off shows, you never know. I mean, special occasions and oddball shit like that, it'll happen. But, uh, oh, what did they open? I, they opened up with Love Like Blood, maybe? I don't remember. It was nuts. But it, it was a, it was a hell of a good time. Uh, and as soon as, the, as soon as they ended, uh, they ended with, uh, the Mr. Monster version of Torn Prince, which is, uh, uh, Mama Sen came out and like, she was just, she was both elated with joy and crying and sad, happy, like every emotion you could imagine. Oh, and speaking of which, Alice, uh, Jason's, uh, widow. That girl has got a set of pipes on her. My God, she did a a Soundgarden or Chris Cornell song. I think it was a Soundgarden song, and uh, it was phenomenal. She fucking I mean, she did a few songs that night, but that one in particular, man, she came out and just fucking ripped the shit up. I believe she did that with the CK5. It was fantastic. There were so many special guest moments. Oh my god! Okay, middle of the Blitz Kid set, they fucking cover. They, they did their they did their cover of Necro Bay by the Crimson Ghosts, and fucking Marco was in the house. Um, Vlad from the Crimson Ghosts. I nearly shit a brick because I thought I had seen him at the show, but I'm thinking, no, it can't be him. I'm never gonna get lucky enough to see any of the fucking Crimson Ghosts because they don't have enough following over here to. At least I don't think they do en enough to play uh, some shows. God, I hope so. You know how much I would kill for a full Crimson Ghost set over here? It'd be amazing. Um, but he came out and did Necro Babe. That dude can sing. Like, he, you could just see the jaws dropping of everyone in the venue. Like, oh. Like, dude's voice is powerful. Powerful. Um, yeah. Uh, it, it was a hell of a night. So, it, but as soon as their set was over, we all just kind of like headed for the door. Um, and uh, I, I was ha I was like almost out the door, and fucking JV grabs me and uh, gives me a big old hug and gives me some pics. Mr. Monster picks. He was. Just, I think he was just getting rid of them and giving them people who uh, he felt would appreciate them. Uh, but and we, like, I had had beer on me. Other people sweat. I was so wanting a shower. I just want to apologize to any of my friends, which was just about all of them that I didn't get pictures with, um, because I was sweaty I wanted a shower really really bad so we just kind of booked it straight back to the hotel um, <clears throat> and uh, I got a shower and we went to sleep because we had to bail in the morning uh, like I say I kind of wish we could have stayed for the second day um, but that show this show uh, the second day started at like two o'clock dear god so early like Mr. Monster went on before six, like five, something like that. Um, uh, my friend Mike, from back from the uh, 138.com days, showed up to the, the second night, and um, he was running around meeting people, and like, it, Goolsby, like he, he showed a picture of me and TB from years ago, 
and he thought he was like you know jg <laughs> thought that was kind of neat i i sent him off hunting um jv uh to say hi and i like he goes which one's jv and i'm like look on stage because if, if someone had posted the uh the this the set lineup and i i was pretty sure at like he i was talking to him like right around 4 30 and i'm like yeah, i think darrow's going on stage now <laughs> so anyway but anyway we got up we got up got ready on our way down to check out of the hotel i look over and uh Tracy is having breakfast so I just pop over and you know I sat down with him for a good half hour while he and his uh, his lady friend finished breakfast and then Chris came over and Chris's wife came over and we just kind of shot the shit for a while it was really nice it'd been a long while since I got to you know check up with TB like that especially in person <sighs> it sucks having your friends live so far away but you know it is what it is. Uh, but then we, we hit the road probably 11 o'clock, got back home in Ohio about 9. I think we rolled into my driveway about 9. And that was the weekend. Uh, emotional roller coaster. I mean, it's extremely sad that we had to say goodbye to Jason. Um, I miss the horror family like nobody's business. And I didn't, like, I don't even know everyone and that's the thing like we all want to know each other it's it's the weirdest shit ever but uh hey all in due time all in due time and then yeah uh never enough hang time with the ones you do know uh maybe we'll do something next year and there's always going to be zombie stomp fest 2 next year uh, so, I don't know. I, this was a good one. Uh, emotional roller coaster, a lot of tears. Also, um, probably the only show that I've been to where instead of a crowd surfer, we had an actual surfboard surfing the crowd, hitting people in the face. Um, I kind of wish Rachel was here because Rachel was up front most of the show and she like she bled at this show she got kicked in the face um a chipped tooth and shit and whew, it was pre it was pretty nuts uh but yeah so that's just kind of my retrospective of the show i've rambled on for like 20 minutes so i just wanted to say that i will see you fuckers next time and long live the horror I'll catch you round.